ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Talking with Kevin and Son. This is brought to you by RMK Productions and the 10 United Podcast Network. Through the power of story, our mission is to uplift through our voices, inspire, share stories and experience perspectives using the framework of teaching, learning, and modeling. Our purpose is simple, is HOPE, H-O-P-E, helping other people every day. Um, we're also doing something for the first time. We're using a product. I am breaking free from my um, $300 road mic, and we're test driving um, the Aeroplex bone connecting headset that we're using uh, today that okay. we're going to be testing. So for our listeners, if you sound quality, if anything is missing, please um, go to info at RMK Productions and tell us if um, um, the quality is as impressive as I feel using the product so we can continue, continue to use it with 10 United. But with that said, I want you to sit back. I want you to relax and I want you to open your mind, open your heart, because this is a story that needs to be told. I discovered this young, young man. Well, I'm not going to say discover because he was already off the chain and off the chart long before um, I was introduced to his, him through a friend. Johan, his friends call him Joey Smith. He's a young vocalist. He's astonishing with his talent. He's an aspiring fashion designer. He is a father. He is a pillar to his community. And he has a story to be told. Today, we're going to learn a couple of things about, one, how he grew up, how his friends, and how he inf was influenced by his friends and how he influences his friends. We're going to talk about how he became a fashion designer and how hip hop and the, the history of hip hop influences not only his music, but also his designs. And you know something, we may get lucky if you stay tuned. He may even perform either one of his songs or a spoken word. So ladies and gentlemen, with that said, all of his friends know him by Joey. So hopefully he's adding me to that list. I'm going to call him Mr. Joey Smith, TEDx speaker, fashion designer, entrepreneur. He is just a wonderful human being. Joey, welcome to Talking With Kevin and Son. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How you doing today, Mr. McMore? Man, I, I'm going to tell you. From the first time we spoke on the phone, I have mad respect for you. Um, there's not a lot of entertainers that we invite to, to this show. And we, we have a thing that we don't have anyone on as a guest unless they're giving back to the community. As long as you're depositing and making an impact and bringing someone up, we'd love to tell your story. Um, we did a whole thing in RMK Productions earlier uh, last year with hip hop. I had a young man um, that came one that was a clean rap artist um, that, um, you know, there were big questions why he did not swear or use the N-word. And I try to educate people. The N-word is not a word to be, be embraced. And so when we talked about um, an artist using clean music versus using the, the music we hear that's commercially put out there, Man, I listen to your music and you talk about love. So before I go on and we talk about your music, your brand, um, and even your connection with some people like Busta Rhyme, um, I want to talk about the 13, 14, 15-year-old Joey. If we were sitting around a group of your friends before you became the man that you are in Norristown, PA, tell me the story about Joey and his relationship with family and friends, 13, 14, 15, getting into high school. <laughs> Okay, uh, I come from a, a family of people that always have thrived and given back to the community. Uh, my mother and my grandmother uh, ran a drill team, uh, the first and only drill team in Narstown. Uh, magnificent precision, straight out of the Elks Lodge on uh, Green Street in Narstown, Pennsylvania. Um, music, rhythm, soul has been instilled in me since I can remember. Uh, and as far as back, I can remember my mother, she sings herself. So her singing rhymes and hymns and melodies to me growing up, 
that's just all has been instilled in my soul and has been growing since a child. Uh, I fell in love with rap. Even as a younger age, listening to a lot of things that even at the time I probably couldn't understand. But at the same time, those things were resonating with me. Things like a uh, first rapper I really fell in love with was a uh, Jay-Z and Beanie Siegel. It was a simple fact. And it, and it wasn't even the, the, the content. It was the vibration they were speaking on. You know, they were speaking from the heart and the soul. They were speaking on things that they've experienced. And as a child, I didn't understand what they were saying, but something resonated with my soul. And as I got older, I started to reading into things and learned about the history of hip hop and rap. And I, I, I learned that uh, rap is really an acronym for rhythmic African poetry. So I started to piece things together and they all started to make sense to me. Like, okay, these people are telling their story through songs, through melodies, through hymns. And as a preteen, I, you know, I, I fell in love with hip hop and I started to fall under into the five elements of hip hop. Uh, you know, from DJing to break dancing to uh, graffiti, all these things were a part of rip hip hop. And as a child, I started taking jeans and shirts in the house and started spray painting and writing on them. And from there, it just has grew with me. And I, I read one time, it said, uh, the creative child is adult, the adult who survived. And that's where I am in my life. I have been through things that at the time going through them, I wouldn't think I would survive them, but I survived them and I'm here. And my family and my friends play a big part. And when I say family and friends, uh, friends are my family. I, I, I just, I thrive off of family. I maneuver off of family. And as a teen, I always rap. I, I used to always write poems, but I never took it serious. I am currently 31 years of age. I didn't really start taking this thing serious until about five years ago at the age of 27. Uh, and even my first project, my first project consisted of a whole bunch of raps that I writ wrote in the seventh grade. And I didn't put them, bring them to life until I was 27 years, 27 years old. But I say all that to say that these things that was boiling now, what people are seeing taking place now are nothing but things that have shaped and formed me from my past. Wow. You, you did all this as a child? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you know, I, I watch the cooking shows and I, and I, and I see these children uh, preparing um, all these wonderful um, foods and adults can't do them. And you're telling me that as a child, you were able to put music and words together in order to tell a story at that young age when most people can't get past their basic uh, history test. And you're going ahead and putting it to a rhythm and a rhyme. I always, yes. say, I always say that words either build or destroy. Your words Certainly. are all about love. What's your connection with love and your neighborhood? Well, my mother, I, I got to give it all to her. Uh, as a child, my mother, she fed my interests. You know, she, she never really tried to teach me what to think. More so taught me how to think for myself. And she never limited in me. She, she, she always, even as a child, I vividly remember my room set up. Uh, I had a, a art section. I had uh, puzzles. I had books. And she just kept my mind open to different things. And the things that she seen me interested in, she fed my interest. Like I said, in sixth grade, she seen that I love rap. She seen that I love writing. She bought me a boom box. And then from there, she just fed my interest from there. And all that, all that was filled with love and that's all i know is love 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 and even as a child my mother taught me hate is a strong word we don't use it and as i grew up i understood why we don't use the word hate i am all about love love beats hate by twos matt matter of fact to our listeners i'm going to tell you he's only 31 years of, years of age and he said love beats hurt hate by twos let me tell you before he leaves this um uh, interview he will learn the power of 10. Love beats hate 10 times over and multiply, never divide. Love conquers all. It, 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 it takes a lot of energy to, to hate, but it feels so good to love someone else. And when, when I say about loving someone else, you know, this was a story that needs to be told because young King, you just brought a brand new life into the world. All right. As a person, 
that's creative. What was it like to look into your child's the first eye and look in your child's eyes for the first time? She's nine months old, right? Yes. All right. Tell me about that experience and how it hit your heart. I thought I knew love until I had my daughter. It was a different type of love. Uh, the moment I seen my daughter, it instantly changed my heart. Instantly changed my heart. Uh, I really can't remember it too much before my daughter got here. It, that's how much it changed my heart. It, it's, it's, I can't picture my life without her now. Uh, it, it, it's, it's hard to even put in words. That is, that, is, that is an experience I will probably never ever experience again. That, it was breathtaking, that it was life. I, I found it, it gave me a new, a new perspective on life. I am so glad to hear you say that because when I first created the concept of talking with Kevin and son, my motivation for bringing my son into the world of entrepreneurship and being a professional risk taker was to show the world that men of color, black men were present in their children's life. The stereotype or the bias that we abandon our children for profit um, is not true. And you're an example of that. And this is the reason why a story to be told. This wasn't part of the interview, but I think it was a necessary con conversation because you know, I know what it's like to walk into a shopping center and have the police or the security guard escort me or follow me around. And people don't realize that looking at me and you, we bleed just like they do. We love just like they do, but we're also present in our children's lives and we do not bind to that stereotype and we educate and we inspire and we protect our, our young, young people. Um, your community, Norristown, PA, Tell us about that and how it inspires and influences your your designs and your music. Well, I, uh, I come from a place of, I wouldn't even, I guess we can say impoverished. Uh, impoverished more so in a, a mental state more than physical. Uh, impoverished in a sense of Narsan, Pennsylvania only consists of 35,000 people that counted uh north south pennsylvania is only 3.5 mile radius um most people here a lot of people here i'm not gonna say most a lot of people here have a boxed in mind state uh it's like even myself i can say i wouldn't even call myself a victim of but i would just say i've been here for 31 years i am 31 years of age uh and even now i'm still opening my eyes and seeing that there's so much more to the world. Norristown, Pennsylvania, it's very historical. It, it, it has a lot of history here, but uh, over the past couple of years, it has been vanished. And But when I grew up, it was, I honestly feel as though my era was the last of a generation. Uh, we grew up, I grew up in the street. I grew up still riding bikes. Uh, most people don't realize I am at the age of 31, I didn't get the internet until 15 years old. It was 2005, 2006 when I first seen the first video on the internet. So my experience in Narstown was more as much so, and it's crazy that I can make this comparison. Uh, me growing up in Narstown in the 90s was like how people grew up in the 70s. There was a lot of community love, a lot of things. People we were stuck together like glue. Uh, even to this day, I still go back and visit my old neighborhood and. I really understand how, uh, you know, people give life to things, to, to, to everything's living around us. And I say that because a lot of the houses on the block that I grew up in, and now you walk through, it looks literally, it looks abandoned. It looks like no one lives there. But I, I, when I flash, had flashbacks and I remember growing up, everybody, the whole house, just the, the whole block just always seemed as if it was alive. It was a thriving community and it isn't that anymore. But me growing up in Narstown, I grew up around a big, big community from the bottom to the top of the block. Everyone was like aunts, uncles, moms, and dads. It's amazing. Uh, I hustled back today to do this interview. I, I went back to my hometown, Dayton, Ohio. I know this interview is not about me, but it's amazing. 
you just read my mind. You just told my story. I grew up in a neighborhood that if you did something wrong, the neighbors punished you before you got home to your parents. And that was just worse. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood and you sat on the porch and you got your history lessons from the elders on there. Grew up in a neighborhood where we set out and um, we did four part harmony under the street lights. Um, we grew up in a neighborhood and we just had to talk about in the event that we had differences and we, we, we had to uh, put hands on someone we hugged them afterwards. We never, you know, drew a gun and took their life. We respected that. And to hear a young man talk about at 31 years old, a relationship connecting to the 70s, I asked myself, why are the people in present day in 2021 lost in the same neighborhood you and I grew up? Any idea? Because I know it's, it's reflected in your music. <laughs> well, I'm happy that we spoke on that. This is would be just is to touch on another topic. Uh music music and entertainment most people think what, what they believe to be is entertainment isn't entertainment it is programming uh music specifically speaking of rap hip-hop pop music popular music uh is the number one genre in the world uh and most people don't know that music is a tool it is not a thing um music is the gateway to the culture of people of African diaspora. Um, that's how we are all tied up in where we are today. It is the messages that is being sent out uh, vocally, visually to our people and the way they are accepting it. And I don't just believe that there are plenty of studies and plenty of research you can do that can prove it to you. You know something? I'm glad you said that because I'm going to ask you a question. Did you know the original braiding of a person's hair was a roadmap instead of just cornrows? Did you know that? Uh, so that's funny that you speak on that. People, it's, it's just like I said, a lot of things are right there in our face. Um, cornrows, another word for cornrows are plaques. Platform, yes, they, they had platforms in their heads, yes, to, to get away from the plantations and also just cornrows. Cornrows are mazes. Why do you think they're called mazes? It's, yes, it would be all to help them get out of their trap. Certainly. I've also read that uh, they also would plant seeds from their homeland to carry so they would never ever get hungry while they, while they were traveling. Man, we, we've got so much education um, here, but I want to talk about your talents, um, where you're going to go, because um, not a lot of people from Norristown, PA, not a lot of people from Dayton, Ohio, in the hood. I call the hood, not the ghetto. I grew up in the hood, the neighborhood. You grew up in the hood, the neighborhood. You're a TEDx speaker. You talked about the influence of hip hop. How did that come to be? Well, uh, like uh, I'll say, I haven't said it yet, but I am a knowledge seeker. I am a truth seeker. Uh, I am big on, some call it black history, I call it world history. I am an avid reader. And growing, like uh, I had a, a awakening at the age of 21. I'm not ashamed to speak of it. At the age of 21, I had got some into some legal trouble. I uh, had got sentenced to six years probation. So from the age of 21 to 27, I was on probation, strict probation. Uh, and within that time, I had really, really had time to sit down and I found myself. I found myself in the same place. I lost myself. I started reading a lot more. I've always been a reader, but but in that in that time, that time frame, I was reading more than I've ever read. And I uh I made a connection. Like I said, I came across some information and I had found out that rap was an acronym for rhythmic African poetry. So I started connecting things. Uh like for instance, like I said, the five elements of hip hop. If you look into it, you start to see that the five elements of hip hop is drawn directly from African history. And I say that to say this because the number one element is graffiti is a form of writing, right? Sure. Uh, when pyramids all around the world, the writing on the pyramids is called graffito. So graffiti is nothing but another form of pictographs and hieroglyphs. Once I started making that connection, everything else just, it started to fall in my lap. And I started to understand that, okay, in 
ancient time, not even ancient, antiquity times, even up to the late 17, 1800s, when all this stuff stopped, uh, one of the most important positions you can hold in a royal house was a griot. And a griot was a historian. A griot told the history orally. They held all the history. And that was one of the most important positions you could have in the royal house. And I started to make the connection. I started to understand that rappers are griots. They are gatekeepers. You know, uh, the people that runs the music industry, not the business, they run the industry. They pay these rappers so much money. And I once read something that said, rappers are paid more than teachers because the spiritual realm always win. Music is a spiritual tool. Music is supposed to move you. Uh, and today, a lot of people are listening to noise and are fooled to may believe that they're listening to music and it's nothing but noise. Noise for profit. Yes. Noise for profit. And you know something with that said, because you are such an impactful and powerful individual. I am impressed with you, young man. Um, and I know people are rushing into work, listening to this, or you know, pulling into Star Starbucks or something like that, getting their um, um, caffeine fix. How do people reach you? How do they get in touch with you? Uh, I am on Instagram. I have two Instagrams. I have one, my business page, which is underscore awesome, underscore A-L-L-S-U-M. Uh, and I have a personal page where you can find a lot of my music videos, uh, underscore awesome Joey, underscore A-L-L-S-U-M-J-O-E-Y. Uh, and you can find me on Facebook under Joey Smith. Joey Smith, Joey Smith, young brother, I'm impressed with you. We are going to connect because I'm going to hand you a copy of my book, Indispensable Games of X's and O's, because our lives, even though I'm 32 years older than you, um, I always say this, none of us are original. We're all copies of some something or someone. The only difference is, is the characters that are in our life and the location and how we react to the story that was told to us and how we're now telling our story. So with that said, you know, I, I know this ask is big and I'm going to ask you if you don't mind, because I, I heard a rumor that you had a connection with Busta Rhyme, you know, yes. hip hop artist, uh, hero, legend in the hip hop world. I heard you had a connection, but, you know, I can sing a little bit, but I can't throw the words together like that. And, you know, but I, I heard you were good. If you would be so kind. I don't care if it's spoken word. I don't care if, if it's your latest single coming out. But as soon as you do that, I want you to go right into telling us how that song was created, how that word was created, and what's your connection with Buster Rhyme. And then we're going to talk about, wait for it, your designs as a fashion designer and how hip hop blends in to your designs. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> the connection with Buster Rhymes is very very organic uh it even started before that uh the connection with Buster Rhymes actually I was introduced to Buster by another big time rapper uh I had did some work with Jadakiss uh Jadakiss had organically reached out to me on social media um I thought it was a joke until he actually wrote me and then he sent me a voice message and let me know it was him. Uh, me and him had did some work. He had found my page on Instagram. He had reached out to me, let me know that he had heard some of my stuff and let me know it was very, very decent. He was impressed. Uh, we did some work. The grace of God, he had reached out to Busta. Him and Busta Rhymes had, must have been together and he told Busta about me and Busta Rhymes reached out to me and me and Busta had ended up doing some work. And uh, I am a firm believer in confirmation, not coincidences. Uh, they say hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. But they also say when you work hard, that people are sent your way to help you on your mission. As long as you stay focused on your mission and you keep one foot in front of the other, people will be sent your way to help you among your mission. And I honestly believe that I have worked so hard that I've aren't these things. These things were not just things that randomly happened. These weren't just a random cases of things that happened. I worked hard and I manifested that. Uh, so those were, they are organic relationships that I have built just from off of hard work. And you, you do know that God doesn't make any mistakes. 
Yes, sir. You are, and I will tell you, um, I, I, I would say that you are a prophet, but because I listen to your words, you are a warrior. You are that front line of, of battle, of conversation and creativity that opens the eyes and hearts of people to say, well, let me make a change within myself. My grandmother always told me, she says, do something so great in life that people will stand in line and pay to hear how you did it. And I'm hoping that this interview sets up that platform for you to be granted your gift, your roses, why you can appreciate that and why your daughter can grow up and go, that's my dad. I know what those tears are like. So with that said, you don't mind. I, I'm going to impose on you. Yes, sir. Throw down for me, little brother. <clears throat> Tables turn, bridges burn, made a light, lead the way. I don't have my darkest nights and thought I'd never see the day or find a way or words to say. So I hop up on these beats and put my heart up on display. Pull up a seat and just listen to me speak. That's the sound of my soul. Stop me kicking the beat. Always deliver heat, maneuver and avoid defeat. We ain't worried about them trends. We too worry about our peeps. We got the ball up at their neck and hell up under their feet. They say haters at home and ain't no love in the streets. Everybody playing for keeps. Take notes to take notice. Got to be able to see when your eyes ain't open and the sun ain't shining. But you grinding, grinding, grinding. May your teeth will meet your timing. May your hustle lap your loafing. May your chakras get aligned. May the gates to your soul open. May it be for the better knowing. All in all, I hope you learn to stay focused. True that, true that. And we're clapping. People have pulled over on the side of the road. Man, you are, I'm going to say the shit, S-H-Y-T. <laughs> I, I love you, young brother. But yes, sir. you know what excites me about this? Um, I just had this conversation with my sister the other day. And she was saying about people. They're either doers or workers. Your top performers in a co company are your doers. The people that make your company what it is are your workers. And there's nothing wrong with being either one. The people that created the opportunity for the doers and the workers to exist are the professional risk takers and the entrepreneurs. You are co-owner of Streets Apparel brand, all some by any means, LLC. Yes, sir. Um, talk about your fashion. Let's talk about that because I'm going to tell you, that was my first connection, and I am desperately looking for someone that is giving back, that has fashion to their community, to be part of our ongoing presence with RMK Productions and 10 United. Um, that was my original interest um, when I reached out to you, but my interest turned because God connects people that, that are helping other people. Um, I fell in love with you, little brother. I, I'm bringing you into it, so I'm hoping that the connection Instead of saying, Johan, your friends call you Joey. I yes, hope sir. I had the privilege to call you Joey, my little brother. I am more than honored, yes. Okay. So talk about you. Let's talk about your designs, your apparel, how it came about. What was the first thing? Who's wearing it? If anyone is, is wearing it, and how do people um, support you in, um, in the building of your, your company? Okay. Well, the, the whole company, well, this whole thing started out of, I was at a, a, a down point in my life. I uh, was working hard, man. I was working for Amazon, busting my tail 12 hours a day, four or five days a week. Um, and something just sparked in my mind, man. One day I was just like, I, I can't see myself doing this for the rest of my life, for someone else. Uh, so I started doing math. I started seeing things. Uh, I was printing shirts at Amazon. It was a very, it was a brand new facility. And the facility I was at, Amazon had just bought this company. The company was called Woot. Uh, now Woot is a part of Amazon. It's just Amazon, Amazon Merch now. And Amazon Merch makes all merchandise for any merch you see on Amazon. This building is placed right in Narstown, uh, right on uh, Boulevard and General, yeah, Boulevard of Generals in North Sound PA, right behind Walmart. Um, and just the math and the science, sitting back, learning the systems, doing things every day. And uh, one day I sat and I really thought to myself, I said, uh, I'm sitting at a printer. Um, the requirements was 50 shirts an hour you had to print. Um, at 50 shirts an hour, 12 hours a day, 
at 50 shirts an hour, at minimum $20 a shirt, you were making on $1,200 an hour. Uh, and I really, one day I sat to myself and I said, oh, I wonder if I could duplicate what they're doing which with much less machinery. So I started doing my research. I did my research. Uh, I found the machinery. I found out methods things I could mock and mimic what they were doing. Um, and I had a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine, his name is Herschel Thornton, which is also, he's a co-owner of the business. Um, he played football and he played at a very high level. He um, was an All-American in college. He uh, proceeded on to Minnesota University and was just, just shy of making it to the NFL due to a personal decision. He decided to live his life differently. Um, we came up with this brand and one day we're just sitting around and the word just came out my mouth, awesome. He said, yeah, that's just a word. And I said, no, we just spell it different. But also there's a meaning behind it, uh, all some, A-L-L-S-U-M, um, meaning that don't let what you do define who you are. And also, no matter what you're doing, as long as it's something apps that you can apply to your life as an applicable, do it, do it for you. It's all some, as long as you're getting a sum out of what you're doing, do it, continue to move forward. In this business, I really started this business with the uh, idea of tying myself to a product and a service. Instead of tying myself to a product, I wanted to tie myself to a service. I one time heard Will I Am talking and he was saying that, you know, his biggest, the biggest business move he ever made was tying himself to a product. And that product was Polaroid. Uh, so I figured I can serve, I can, I can tie myself to a service, which is printing. And as time go on, as I get bigger, I can serve my community by hiring people and teaching them a trade and a skill. So with Awesome, that's where we are right now. We are in the middle of, we are a small business, but we're building and our objective and goal is to build a manufacturer and production company to be able to give back to our community and give jobs and help people build themselves up. Uh, and as far as designs, um, my first project was called a rose from the concrete. Well, it was called Crackademic Errors. It was a play on the word academics. Um, a rose from the concrete. And as you can, I'll show you now, I use a lot of roses, a lot of roses, a lot of bugs. Uh, and that's an, a representation of nature. Um, we are one with nature. And I am taking different perspectives from history, from uh, nature, from hip hop, and just throwing these things all into one bucket because they always coincide with each other and making a brand out of it. That's all right. That's all right. Um, and how do they uh, reach you on to, to buy apparel from you? Yes, yeah, so you can directly reach me on my Instagram awesome page. You can view the shop or you can private message me and everything is there for you to get in contact with me. Uh, Joey, this has been personally, a, a heck of an experience. Um, I'm touched in my heart. I hope we have reached um, our viewers in a certain kind of way. We've covered a lot of information. And I hope this uh, episode is something that, especially young people, see and share. I know we didn't sensationalize hip hop and rap the way it's done for profit, but we educated people based on the conversation and the power of words. But we also, I want people to realize, and I, I had this conversation re refer back to me. I had a choice in life. And I always tell people, you have two options, chance and choice. The life that I was living before my book, Indispensable Games of X's and O's and how I was introduced to football, I was headed for either a box, a tombstone or bars. And, my, and I grew up in a great family. My grandparents uh, raised me, but I was making some choices that were against how I was being raised. And there's a child sitting out on the porch right now being asked to do something that's going to compromise his life, be it Philly, Atlanta, Detroit, Los Angeles, uh, Oakland, San Francisco, and whatever, that I want you to look back at Joey, entrepreneur, music artist, and look what he did. Yeah, choice and chance put him in a situation that compromised his freedom, but look what he did with his choices when he had control of his life. His daughter is going to look back on this, this interview and go, that's, that's my dad. I will tell you, once you, had a, you have a child, especially if you're about anything inside your heart, it puts an exclamation part 
point on what you need to do for life. Everything that you do has to matter. So with that said, Joey, I have a lot of people that follow RMK Productions and the 10 United um, Podcast Network. I have a lot of people that watch and listen to the podcast talking with Kevin and Son. And I always say, I'm never going to have a million followers or subscribers, but I have a group of people that have a higher call to action. They don't drive by an accident. They stop to help. So I'm going to ask this of you. And none of my guests have ever been prepared for this. And I will say I'm one of few podcasters that can say within the, the less than nine months that I've been in existence, I've had four people that have answered this question and have their ask, A-S-K, come true. Now, I'm going to ask you to take a couple of seconds, take a deep breath, and I want you to follow what we've been taught in church. When you ask God, you know, you ask it and he shall receive, but make sure you ask in detail and ask big. So, Joey, if any of my viewers had an opportunity to impact your life in a way that would be life-changing, what would your ask be? Wow, that's crazy. As you said, a, a lot of the people that you've interviewed, you said they weren't prepared for this question. Um, this question plays in my mind every day, all day. Um, I tell my peers all the time, I, we are in a generation of creatives, and it's literally, it's, it's a time to be alive. Uh, I say this all the time, that this generation, we need mentors more than we need money because we are very creative. Uh, if I could ask for anything, it would be a mentor. It would be somebody who has done where I'm trying to get to or are currently still doing what I'm doing and trying to get to where I'm trying to get to. The only thing I could possibly ask for is a mentor. I mean, that's one thing I can honestly say growing up, I haven't had too many male figures who had impact on my life or too many male figures, excuse my French, who were used to making shit move, you know, who, who were prepare bigger spaces for themselves. I have, I feel as though I'm at a point in my life where even in this, this little box of Narstown I'm in, um, I have reached a pinnacle. I have done all that I can in the space that I am. If I could ask for anything, it would be a mentor. Joey, I, I'm going to tell you within the next 48 hours, I can almost guarantee you your ask is going to be granted. Almost guarantee you. All right, because I, I told you from day one, I, I'm impressed with you. Um, I'm bringing you into my family. Um, we need to connect. We live close enough. I'm going to give you a book. You're going to read it. We're going to talk. I'm going to share some things with you that uh, I'm doing. And um, I'm going to promote the living crap out of you. And not only are you going to have me as a mentor, you're going to have a couple other people that are influential people that are going to be mentors. I... I I couldn't thank you enough, or there's no way I could thank you. I have, no. I, I, like we spoke before, I've, um, I haven't met so many men of your caliber. No, I, I, I'm thanking you because I've, the reason why I'm doing what I do, the reason why I wrote my, my book, Indispensable Games of X's and O's, I wanted to make sure that there was not another child being chased home with a 38 slug being following behind him. Uh, in order for him to discover his purpose and that he had world-class speed. I want to provide an opportunity to whereas you can thrive and tell your story. You know, my whole podcast is about people you should know. This company, RMK Productions, is about people having a voice that will never get hurt. This story would have never been told if I hadn't ran into one of your, your, your closest friends at one of the high-end health clubs here and uh, King of Prussia, I am moved by you. I'm touched. I am inspired. And if you take anything away from the gift that I'm going to give you, I'm going to ask you to pay it forward. So to my listeners, it's time to get on the Joey train. If you've got some back, some power behind you, you've got great vision, your heart is open. I'm going to ask you to go to info at rmkproductions.net. Fill out the comment box, put in um, how we can reach you, and let's have a conversation. And I will say, I will not give out my number to someone that's going to waste my time. So if you reach out to me and you're not committed to going forward, 
stay in your seat, stay in your lane. I need people with great purpose. For those young people, they get a chance to, to see this video. I know it's not one of those TikTok things that you laugh. I know we're not putting our people down. Um, we, I know that we're not supporting the bias or the stereotype, but this is a story that needs to be told. I'm gonna ask you to share it. I'm gonna ask you to come to RMK Productions and network on our YouTube page, subscribe, because we got good things coming for you. And I wanna appreciate everyone that has tuned in, that has supported us, friends, family, and everything else. And I want you to adopt this hashtag. Find 1,000 reasons to be kind to someone. My grandfather always said, when you get to a position that you can help someone else, it is your duty to do so. Reach one, teach one. I want to thank um, Aftershock for allowing me to use their bone conductor um, headphones in order to do this interview. I appreciate that. And I appreciate my fans and supporters and my friends and my family. And um, hopefully we'll make a difference in someone's life. So with that said, we're gonna fade to black. My friend, Joey, my young brother, um, my new family member, um, you have an open door to come here any time that you want. You say the word, you got something new, I'm gonna promote the living crap out of you and it won't cost you a dime. Thank you, Watch sir. Mad love, thank you. Mad love, and to our viewers, come back and um, you know, look at um, Joey's, go to his Instagram page, go to his YouTube page, watch his videos. You've gotta listen to his TEDx speech when he talks about the influence of hip hop. It's the bomb, I'm gonna tell you. I'm dating myself saying it's the bomb, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm not as cool as you. Joey, let me ask you a question. We, yes, we left. Take us out with a little bit of spoken word. Just, just freestyle. Take us out and, and leave us with something to think about. Uh, what can I give you? Okay. Let's talk about One love. Day I realized my mama gave her life. One day I realized my mama paid the price. She nearly gave her life just to raise me right. I vibrate. And then my mind migrates to the ocean of devotions and dimensions of attention where I see myself in, ah, I see myself in dimensions where I couldn't even imagine. I picked up all the good and I put down my bad habits. Something about the money, it's like, I gotta have it because we can't live without it. Ah. That's uh, okay. I know I caught you off guard. <laughs> Man, yeah. This mad, mad love. Um, I, again, everyone, I want to say thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And God, thank you for putting me in a place and surrounding me with people with greater gifts than I, and I have. And I hopefully I'll take these tools and I will build a wall for you in your name. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right, Joey. So that